when the Buddha taught metta meditation, he never said that who you had to start with, except in one instance. He says, bandits have pinned you down, they're sawing off your limbs with a two-handled saw. And he spread goodwill first to them and then to the whole universe. That's the opposite of what we've often heard. When you start with yourself or somebody that you find easy to feel metta for and then gradually expand. But none of those are wrong. Last night in one of the Zoom meetings, a woman was saying that she had never thought of spreading metta to herself. Somebody had suggested it. And then she found she couldn't expend, <laughs> spread metta to anybody else. All the time was with her, for herself. If you find that you have a metta sink, somebody that requires a lot of metta, could be yourself, could be somebody else, okay, just keep pouring the metta in. Eventually it'll fill up. And then it'll start to overflow, and then it can spread to others. So whatever way you're going to spread metta, to yourself first, or just in general. The whole point is that you begin to think about how your happiness has to depend on your actions, and your actions will have an impact on other people. So you want to be very careful about how you act in your search for happiness. That's metta combined with heedfulness. And that's what makes it skillful. Otherwise, it just gets sentimental. I talked one time to someone who worked on a staff at a retreat center. And I asked him if he noticed the difference between people on a Vipassana retreat and people on a Metta retreat. And he said one of the things you noticed was that on a Metta retreat people used a lot more honey in their tea. As if that were an expression of Metta, putting more honey in your tea. It's there to remind you, the teaching of Metta is to remind you that our search for happiness is nothing to be ashamed about. After all, that's what everybody's looking for is happiness, one way or another. But we want to make sure that we do it in a way that's responsible, because otherwise our happiness is not going to last. If you have genuine goodwill for yourself, you have to have goodwill for others. At the very least, wish for their happiness. Wish for them to behave in skillful ways, too. But primarily it starts with a wish, may I behave skillfully in my search for happiness? And then you want to find out, well, what is skillful? And if you're serious about your happiness, you'll be serious about finding out what is skillful. That requires a lot of reflection. Looking at your actions, seeing how they actually impact yourself, impact other people. But taking responsibility for your actions is always a good thing.